हेलो गाइस, आई एम सत्यम एंड यू आर हियर ऑन आर वन एंड ऑल चैनल सत्यम आइडियल लर्निंग एंड गाइस टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फर्टिलाइजेशन इन एनिमल्स इन ग्रेटर डिटेल एंड प्रेगनेंसी एंड मेंस्ट्रुअल साइकिल ओके सो रेडी माय सोल्जर्स ऑफ नीट नाउ वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट व्हाट टॉपिक्स as we have already discussed fertilization pregnancy menstrual cycle today in this lecture we will be discussing about these topics at the very first we will be discussing about fertilization as i have already told you guys fertilization is the process of the fusion of the sperm with ovum sperm is the male sex cells and ovum is the female sex cells okay the fusion of this uh, sperm and the ovum makes what makes the zygote and the zygote grows into embryo and embryo into a baby and then baby into an adult so let's discuss about fertilization in greater detail now what happens during the sexual intercourse during the sexual intercourse the sex cells the sperm the male sex cells enters through the vagina and then it goes upside through the uterus and then it goes to the fallopian tube okay so the sperm goes it swims and goes to the vagina vagina is the external part of the uterus as we have already discussed and then the sperm will float into the uterus and then it will go into the oviduct or fallopian tube and in the fallopian tube the fertilization occurs and now in the fallopian tube what happens the fusion of the sperm and one ovum will happen and then the zygote will form let's discuss when the sperm fuses with ovum zygote forms okay and then the zygote travels to the uterus okay it travels back to the uterus then travels down to the uterus and gets attached to its wall okay you know now what is uterus uterus is a hollow muscular organ and then the zygote comes to the uterus and then it attaches to the wall of the uterus now it divides repeatedly okay it divides repeatedly to form what embryo see it divides repeatedly to form embryo and when it looks like baby and when it looks like baby it is called what fetus okay so it is called fetus when it looks like a baby okay so when the embryo looks like a baby it is known as fetus it is called fetus now the muscular walls of the uterus the muscular walls of the uterus have rich supply of blood vessels okay so the muscular walls of the uterus through which the embryo has been attached the zygote has been attached and grown up into the embryo so the muscular walls of the uterus help in the supplying of the blood vessels have richly supplied sorry have rich supply of blood vessels so the muscular walls of uterus have rich supply of blood vessels which nourishes the growing baby it nourishes the growing embryo baby okay the fetus so it helps in the nourishment of the growing baby okay this muscular wall of the uterus it has very rich supply of blood vessels now nutrients oxygen and other substances pass from the blood vessels into baby's blood through placenta placenta is a kind of structure through which 
the nutrients the oxygen and other substances are passed from the blood vessels to the baby okay to the baby it passes to the baby's blood placenta helps in the passing of the nutrients oxygen and other substances okay and placenta links the embryo by umbilical cord okay so placenta is linking with the embryo placenta is also linking with the embryo by umbilical umbilical cord okay umbilical cord through which uh, umbilical cord it is attaching it is connected it is linked through the placenta so embryo had been linked through the umbilical cord through placenta okay to placenta now see placenta also helps in the it also helps so that the carbon dioxide and all the excretory products are are released from the baby's blood to baby's body to the mother's blood okay so placenta also helps in the releasing of the excretory products and carbon dioxide from the baby's body to the mother's blood okay now see we'll be discussing about baby how the baby structure is there and how through which it is surrounded and how it is getting nourishment now the baby is surrounded by amniotic sac within the uterus the baby is surrounded by a sac which is known as the amniotic sac okay so it is a sac like it is surrounding the baby okay amniotic sac and this amniotic sac contains amniotic fluid okay so the amniotic sac contains amniotic fluid and the fluid this amniotic fluid helps in the cushion okay it helps in the cushion you can see in the diagram also guys it is very clearly that there is amniotic sac and in that amniotic sac there is amniotic fluid which helps in the cushion now uh, and after that uh, this amniotic fluid now what is pregnancy we will be discussing about this term pregnancy the baby the embryo develops in about 9 months okay so uh, so an embryo develops in about 9 month and this period of 9 month in which the embryo gets developed into a baby is known as the uh, this pregnancy the period of 9 month is known as the pregnancy okay and in the end of pregnancy amnion burst and the baby come out from uterus through vagina you know vagina is the external part of the uterus and the the there is am amniotic uh, membrane also okay so the amni the amniotic membrane the membrane of the amniotic sac is known as amnion so the membrane of the amniotic sac is known as amnion and this amnion burst and the baby come out from the uterus by the contractions of the uterus when the uterus will contract the baby will come out so this is how it is happening the amnion means the membrane of the amniotic sac burst and the baby come out from the uterus by the contraction of the uterus through vagina okay through the vagina it comes out now we will be discussing about the identical and non identical twins okay so we will be discussing about identical and non identical twins first we will be discussing about non identical twins sometimes it happens the two ova the two ova matures at the same time and they may, and they may fertilize also simultaneously 
So then sometimes it happens that the two ova, the two ovum will, uh, will mature at the same time. And they, and they may be fertilized also simultaneously. And then what happens? Then they will grow into the zygote and they will grow into the embryo, then baby. Then two baby will be formed. But these two baby will be non-identical. These two twins are non-identical. Okay? Because they are formed by uh, ovaries which are others. Which are other ovaries. Okay? So one is other and the second one is other. So they are different. That is why they are not identical. They are non-identical. Non-identical means that they are different from each other. Okay? So non-identical twins is clear. Now how the identical twins is formed? Sometimes happens that the fertilized egg, the fertilized egg divides into two. The fertilized eggs divide into two. When the fertilized egg is single and when it divides into two, the characters, the genetic characters will also be the same and then they will grow into the embryo and then the baby, zygote embryo and baby. And then these, uh, then these two twins are the identical one because they are being divided from a single cell. Okay. So these are the identical twins and th that I have told you about the non-identical twins. Now, we will be discussing about the these uh, three things that I have to told you. One is menstrual cycle, menstrual cycle and menstruation we will be discussing and about the menopause we will be discussing. See guys. Now in the end of the pregnancy, amnion bursts and baby come out from the uterus through vagina. Oh, now one ovum is released once in 28 days. I have told you already in my previous lecture that one, only one ovum is released from any or any one of the ovaries from any one of the ovaries only one ovum will release from uh, the ovaries any one of the ovaries in 28 days once in a 28 days it will release only one ovum so only one ovum will be released from either of the ovaries okay either of the ovaries means from either the left side or the right side okay in 28 days. Once in 28 days. Now one of them is released once in 28 days which is called what? Ovulation. This thing you also have to mark. Ovulation. <clears throat> okay. So one of them is released once in 28 days and this is known as ovulation. Now and this ovulation is followed by the thickening of the uterine wall. By the thickening of the uterine wall. When the ovulation occurs, then it is followed by the thickening of the uterine wall. Uterine wall thickens. Why the uterine wall thickens? There is the thickening of the uterine wall because to because it is already been prepared. Okay, so the uterine wall is thickening so that it can be prepared to uh, allow the zygote, allow the zygote to come and then it will nourishes it then the zygote or the embryo will come and then it will nourishes it so it is preparing itself so the uterine wall thickens and then the embryo will attach to itself to the uterine wall and then it will be nourishing the embryo okay that is why it is thickening so that it is preparing itself to nourish the uh, coming embryo okay the coming embryo now if uh, if ovum is unfertilized first of all i have to tell you that in the uterine wall there is a lot of blood supplies needed there is a lot of blood supply is needed to happen to thickening of the uterine wall okay <clears throat> now if one uh, if ovum is unfertilized if ovum is unfertilized 
You are listening very carefully, guys. It is thrown out through the vagina along with the lining of the uterus, uterine uh, thickening also, it will thrown out and blood. Okay, so if the ovum is unfertilized, if the ovum is unfertilized, then it will thrown out um, outside the vagina. Okay, through the vagina, it will thrown out along with the lining of the uterus and blood. And this is known as menstruation. Menstruation. Okay, so this is known as menstruation. Now the whole process of ovulation thickening of the uterine wall and menstruation is known as menstrual cycle okay so the whole process of the ovulation thickening of the uterine wall and the menstruation is called menstrual cycle so i think menstrual cycle is also clear and menstrual cycle happens in whole 28 days Okay, in 28 days it completes. Now, menstruation stops at age around 45 to 50. It stops in women. Okay, in women it stops around 45 to 50 age. So, menstruation stops at the age around 45 to 50 in women, and this is known as menopause. Okay. So, menopause. What is menopause? When the menstruation stops at the age around 45 to 50, then it is known as menopause. I think guys, all these things about the fertilization, pregnancy and menstrual cycle, ovulation, menstruation and the menopause. I think all these things are crystal clear in your mind. Let me know in the comment section. Please do the comment so that I can know that how uh, how much you are understanding okay so bye bye guys we will meet in the next time very soon